Hello everyone, welcome to Harv's World, and that's right, Koala, let's go! Let's do this. Sunday Fun Day, Graham, thank you so much for dropping in. Eddie18 and Smitty. Tell Glenda we said hi, as always. Good to see everyone today. Ah, still pushing for that 12 million, or a million dollar a month goal in our first year. Not doing too shabby. Um, we've got... Well, this field is ready to harvest. Our lavender will be ready to harvest in August. You can see that lovely purple over there. Just waiting for us to get at it. How's everybody doing? Um, we don't have Sharko today, so it's just me and Caveman. Say hi, Caveman. Hello. Hello. <laughs> you're uh, you're uh, muted. You're, you're, you're turned down just a little bit. And the indomitable Kevin P. How's it going, Kev? Is that better? That's better. I hope um, I move my mic when I hit the mute button. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jordan the Canadian Kid, good to have you with us. So how's everybody doing? Everything going well? I've got I've got a bit of an announcement. Uh, those of you who are with us on Friday night probably already know what it is. But I'm going to wait just a little bit. Let some uh, let some folks trickle in. We're uh, currently sitting on a cool half a million dollars, which is burning a hole in our pockets because you know a million dollars a month. I'm actually starting to get an idea of exactly how massive this goal is. This is going to be crazy. Like to get to twelve million dollars a year is going to take so much. We might end up owning the whole map by the time we're done. And I'm almost not exaggerating about that. Almost not exaggerating about that. Um, I would like to say right up front, and I should have put this in the... Uh, in the channel title, but Happy Father's Day to everyone out there celebrating Father's Day today. Um, I hope your kids have brought you loads and loads of joy over your lifetimes. And not the pain and suffering I caused my parents. Okay, I didn't cause them pain and suffering, but... <laughs> well, every parent laments over their kid at some point, right? Not everybody's perfect. Anyway, happy Father's Day, everybody. And uh, that even counts for people who are acting fathers. Maybe you're not a biological father, but... Those guys who step up and, and take care of the responsibilities when no one else is available... Kudos to you guys, too. Uh, especially a big map like this, Smitty. Especially on a big map like this. Not, not, uh, not impossible. Making $12 million a year. If we get there. I'm not going to say we can do this. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure that we can get there. Um, we're going to give it our best try. I'm, I'll, I'll say I'm 95% sure we can get there, but I won't, uh, I'm not promising. <laughs> it's going to be a long haul. Luckily, we've got good contracts to help us push along. We've set some rules for those contracts because they are pretty darn lucrative and we can make a lot of money real in a hurry, but that doesn't count towards our 12 million. So we'll see. We will see. Got a, uh, a new mod to show you guys today. Uh, something that Caveman decided to create based on an idea from the stream. And because we needed it. Um, so that's going to be uh, pretty cool. What else have we got? Don't forget to show off how heavy it is. And yeah, we'll show off how heavy it is too. <laughs> Um, Mr. Koontz, how's it going, man? Good to see you again, as always. Had a good stream on Friday. The impromptu was a lot of fun. It's a very good stream. For those of you who can make those late nights, I appreciate it. You know, it's just a very chill time where we all hang out and talk about whatever. Come on, Harvester. It's dry and all that now. We're going to buy um, a new a new plot today and probably put in a couple of things on that new 
It's gonna be a new place in this area. We need we need some elbow room, some Lebensraum. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Smitty. I believe I do change those, but then I'll go back and, and grab some information from a previous stream. But maybe I just totally missed that one. I don't know. But, yeah, I appreciate you bringing that to my attention, so I will I will definitely make that correction. I'm not entirely sure how, much, how helpful those hashtags are anyway, but it's best to have them proper. Rooster Neck, how's it going, man? Okay, um, enough time has gone by. Man, ten minutes already? Oh, we're like eight minutes in already. Wow. <laughs> and we never bumped time up either. Oh, crap. I got it. Alright, thank you. Um, okay, so what we discovered during the impromptu stream on Friday is that yesterday... June the 18th is the official two-year anniversary of Harv's World. Been doing this for two years. I can't believe it. It seems like just yesterday I uploaded that first video, scared out of my britches. But here we are, two years later, and I said on Friday that, you know, maybe we should do something special on Sunday, and then I realized yesterday... Um, I was going to need more time to prep something. So we're going to do a two-year anniversary special a week from today, next Sunday. Um, Easy Rider was in the stream on Friday. And he has generously donated a copy of FS22 to the cause already. Um, I'll kick in some stuff from my merch shops. And, uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just, uh, all get together, have some fun, um, and celebrate two years of Harv's World. And who knows, by then we might even break the 7,000 subscriber mark. Folks, keep coming, and I very much appreciate your support, everybody. Oh, and Eddie, I did want to. I did want to say, you know, the whole thing with the uh, the mulcher. Don't even sweat that for a second, guy, because you've you've given us tons of fantastic information. Um, and you know, and we still don't know plus or minus whether it's applicable on this map or not. And the only reason I say that is, you know, we've gotten reports from folks that the the mulchers don't affect your environmental score. Which, personally, I think Mulcher should improve your environmental score. But we had that whole discussion. It just seems seems to me... It seems like mulching actually should add to your uh, nitrogen level, too. It really should, you think. Since you're putting plant matter back into the soil. I mean, isn't that the whole, whole idea behind uh, oilseed radish, which we... We've been planting to try to uh, boost our nitrogen level without spending so much on fertilizer. And that was based on a suggestion from one of the viewers, too. Throw some oilseed radish in there and get some free nitrogen out of it, so... You guys always, always put us on the right path. Oh, nice, Eddie. So, what what did your testing come up with then, for the mulchers? I'm pretty sure you did another post about it, but uh, I'm not remembering it right off the top of my head. And when I get turned around again, I will. Uh, oh, there's Easy Rider. I was just talking about you, bud. Letting everybody know that a week from today we're going to do the two-year anniversary stream and that you have uh, graciously donated a copy of FS22 to give away, which is very cool and I can't thank you enough for that. Oh, okay. But uh, you're on board now, you know, with everybody basically saying that uh, that mulching doesn't, doesn't negatively impact your uh, environmental score. We are already seeing some benefit to our environmental score going up. A few bucks here and there when we yeah. sell. Can't 
Plain Janes and coffee on a speed on a stream. It's all good. Absolutely. I've got my big uh, big coffee mug sitting beside me. I'm gonna do ups and downs now, caveman. I'm done with headlands. You're like, thank God. <laughs> it don't matter to me either way. Oh, come on. My throttle just is being weird these days. I think Eric asked if I'd taken it apart and cleaned it out or anything yet, and I haven't gone that far yet. I haven't had an opportunity. As long as I don't, you know, put my foot within five feet of it, it goes just fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what do you know, Caveman? What have you been up to? Not much. Working on learning some Python. Nice. That's about it. So mulchers are variable every time. That's interesting. Variable every time. What do you mean? Like he's getting a different result every time he runs the tests is my uh, interpretation there. That's a little weird. If you want to park the truck on one end of the field now, caveman, and uh, start running the baler, you can. So I think I could probably run three or four passes before I fill up, so it'd be good. And I need to remember to say Happy Father's Day several times throughout the stream today, because people come and go. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. Hopefully your children are a blessing and not a curse. <laughs> I think nine times, 99.9% .9 of the time, kids are always a blessing. But I never had any. Uh, when you plug your throttle in, your vehicle goes backwards without touching the left pedal. That could, that's probably just a setting issue. You probably just need to turn down your, um, dead zones. If your dead zones are too high, then, um, it will activate different buttons or throttle, even steering. So it's probably just a matter of getting your dead zones right, and that should clear up, Smitty, I would think. I think I think I'm right. If if I'm not, somebody uh, somebody fill in the blanks for me. Too cool. Welcome back, buddy. Does this Welcome mean? Back. Yeah. Does this mean your vacation is over, or uh, you just uh, on your phone for a little bit? We are going to try to get into August so that we can get that lavender field. We've uh, got our contracts done for July. Oh, and I was going to catch you guys up on the whole uh, the whole uh, money situation. Just so I like to I like to try to you know we're trying to make sure this is a completely honest playthrough and. Uh, So I want to I want to make sure to uh, check in on that pretty much every stream so you guys can see exactly what we're doing and how we're doing it. There we go while we're unloading. That's a good time. So for this month we have two hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars worth of contracts. Last month we only got in one hundred thirty-three thousand, and we do have an outstanding contract for seventy-six thousand, which maybe will get done today. Maybe. Um, it is 89 acres of plowing. <laughs> we'll see. That's a lot of plowing. You absolutely need the spot spare to get a 100% environmental score. Oh, sitting in the airport. Those pictures you were posting too cool in the Discord were spectacular, brother. 
really, really good stuff. And I still want you to share that shrimp. I'm going to keep bugging you about it until you send me some. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good to have everybody with us, man. We've got a nice stream going today. 22 to get started. Absolutely, Kev. Kev stays on top of that stuff for me. And I very much appreciate Mr. Per Perlinski's uh, hard efforts. How many fathers do we have with us today? Are your kids cutting you some slack and uh, giving you a break so you can watch some farm sim or do some gaming of your own? <laughs> I've always been impressed. I've had several people come in and uh, talk about um, you know, they started playing farm sim to play with their kids and stuff like that. And I think that's that's just amazing that a little game like this can, can, you know, bring parents together with their kids. And, you know, on its face, a lot of people would probably kind of roll their eyes and go, oh, yeah, that's boring. Obviously, we have all found a love of the game, so we will not, not count them. All right, too cool. Have a safe flight, brother. If we don't see you again, uh, I'm sure we'll catch up with you this week. Take care, bud. Safe flight. Right, Smitty? That was amazing. And when you get up to 100% environmental score, you can switch to mechanical weeding until you need to plow again. But you don't ever have to plow, do you? Hey, that's that's the best my kids have ever gotten too, Smitty. Uh, two cats. Never two dogs, but two cats. Oh, and I think I should have uh, gone ahead and emptied while I was down there. Oh, well. Oh, there you go, Kyle. And Kyle, welcome to Harv's World. Good to see you, man. I don't think I caught you when you came in, so I do like to try to shout out everybody. Show my appreciation. We've got some very interesting stuff coming up, guys. Um, like I said, yep, I knew I should have should have emptied while I was down there. Oh well. Uh, like I said, we're going to show off one of Caveman's new mods today. And then in the not-too-distant future, some of you uh, some of you picked up on it on the Friday night stream. But uh, we are going to show you a never-before-seen mod. Never-before-seen, and it's such a brilliant idea, I think. Sometimes I'm a little bit easily impressed. I own that, but I think this time it's just like, wow, that's a great idea. So within a few weeks, uh, probably two or three weeks, we'll tease that a little bit more. But it's very, very interesting. I like it. Kevin, your your boys are camped out at the house over there. Well, that's cool. You got to, you know, it's Father's Day weekend. You got to spend the weekend with your sons, too. That's awesome, man. There we go. This is going to be a, a nice little chunk of triticale. Oh, yeah. Oh, after about eight times harvesting with the mechanical weeder, you just had to plow, huh? Now that's an aspect of uh, precision farming that I don't remember uh, hearing about before that, or is that still a setting that you can turn off? I'll look at that here in a second. Is that, that I mean, periodic plowing, but periodic plowing is only ever meant, really, that at least for 19 and then it carried over to 22 was, uh, there were three crops that you had to plow over. I think it was corn, sunflower, and was it sugar beets? It was one of the root crops. I'm pretty sure. It was both root crops. Was it? Potatoes and sugar yes. beets? Yes. Okay. 
We had that discussion had many to... times. Plow, periodic plowing Always means you got to plow every third. Yep, every third harvest. But that has not been my experience. Because the game will tell you when you need to plow. Yes. In my experience, it's told me after every third harvest that I needed to plow. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought, guys. It's still a setting that you can turn off periodic plowing if you don't want to deal with the plowing. And the plowing is pretty detrimental to your environmental score. I don't think I'm mistaken about that. I'm going to turn off this straw swath for a second. Just sweep this edge right here. Had a little lag spike and tried to pull a shark over there. That's no good. <laughs> Not at all. There we go. Had a week. Keep that swath back on and let's rock and roll. A couple more passes will be done on this field. I'll go grab a bale trailer and actually collect all the bales. I really want to get into that lavender field today. <clears throat> yeah, I think it would be nice to see how that turns out. Donatus Bigellis, welcome to Harv's World. Glad you've been watching the vids, man. You've been enjoying them. Good to see you on the stream, too. Thank you so much for coming in and joining us today. You'll find everybody here is a friendly and welcoming group, so don't be shy. Uh, we love to answer questions. We'll 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 talk about anything pretty much, except politics and religion. If you have questions about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, or any random weird stuff, feel free to ask. <laughs> Oh, I see, Smitty. Okay, so plowing doesn't necessarily kill your environmental score, but you get a bonus for doing using a direct drill. I've got it. I understand. So does that mean if you plow and you use a direct drill after it, it negates it? That's an interesting point, or an interesting question. Because, I mean, it is just programming in the game, so. If they didn't code it right, it could be that way. Yeah, I will, um, I'll message you in Discord Easy Writer. We're not, um, like I said, we're doing the one-year anniversary next Sunday. I just needed some more time to prep for it when uh, I realized that it was coming. Um, and Smitty says no, Caveman, that it does not. It doesn't negate... Like if you plow and then direct drill, you don't get the direct di drill credit. Okay. Apparently, apparently you got a direct drill on an unplowed field. That's my okay, take so, on it. So at least they got the coding to make it do that. Right. Okay, so we have to keep up on our soil information. We, we keep buying it when we buy fields. We just have to remember to uh, rebuy it when it gets to be old data. And if it completely runs out, then we lose our environmental score that we built up. That's good to know. All right, last pass of Triticale. 
Okay, Someone? so can somebody confirm or deny whether or not the soil sampler actually gives you the data? Or do you have to buy it? Uh, Rooster Neck, yes. The two-year anniversary stream will be doing next Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. And um, Easy Rider has been very kind and generous to donate a copy of FS22. Um, I'll probably, I will definitely throw in some merch from the merch store. And, um... Do our thing. Maybe we'll try to figure out one or two other things to uh, to do. After plowing, you always need to update your soil information. Okay. All right, triticale harvest complete. So then we need to collect up these bales and put some oilseed radish in here real quick, which won't take long. Yeah, soil sampler only gives you nitrogen. You don't get your pH or anything, just the nitrogen. You have to buy the information in order to get the pH level. So it would seem. Let's see if I can get this header back down to our farm. I need to swap headers to do the lavender to next month anyway, so. Let's see if traffic will give me a break here. I knew it would cost you money to send it to the lab. I was just wondering what information you got. Oh, the sampler does give you all all of it. Okay, good. Good. But then you have to do all the soil sampling. I, I, I got an idea. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Pinky. Someday I too will arrive. Sampler gives you all the information. Right. And we know it was possible to turn that into a scanner that did the same thing in 19. What are the odds we could make a scanner or take the scanner that they give you in 22 and make it give you all three like the sampler does? works for me. Oh, I thought I had dropped this, but apparently not. Um, and we are using many, many, many mods. Donatus. We are using a great deal of mods. We always do. Uh, we actually had this discussion. Was that on Friday night, guys? We were talking about um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Alaskan Sourdough who who stopped in. We were chatting a little bit, and he said he he tried to do a play a modless playthrough, and he came to realize just how much mods make this game, and they really do. You know, say what you will about wow. mods. Um, I don't like to use any mods that make everything too easy, but you know, hand loading all of these bales for my playtime would kind of suck <laughs> so um <clears throat> we obviously have an auto load bale trailer and yeah. somebody parked these bales right dead smack in the middle of the yard <clears throat> sharko <clears throat> the 
but this will give me the opportunity to a move them out of the way and b show you one of the things well do one of our purchases for today oh you can use the sampler with course play okay that gives us a reason to buy a a tv yeah we just need to install one first but smitty says a good modder should be able to make the scanner do all three like fs19 and we all know i just want to test to see how well course play works <laughs> no that's a good point too <laughs> Course play does a lot of interesting stuff. I happen to have this same bale trailer hooked up on my private playthrough, um, and I put it on a field that had bales in it. And course play said, uh, "Bale collecting, bale bale wrapping." And I was like, "Huh?" So I pushed the play button on course play, and it just started driving around, uh, collecting bales. Didn't even need a course; it just was searching out the bales and driving right to them. It was very slow, but shoot, if I can pay a helper to collect bales for me, sign me up, brother. <laughs> sign me up all day. Okay, so we're going to buy this little placeables area right here. We, Like I said, we need, we need some farmyard room. Oh, wrong button. And so the first thing I'm going to do is jump on our map farmland this is about a hundred and yeah hundred and four thousand so we're gonna buy that right here now we're the proud new owners of some space some elbow room some leavens realm um under silos now this mod that i'm about to place guys i gotta tell you it's a fantastic mod and i don't know what happened to it the guy who makes it um his name is casa farms and he he's in the discord um and this this was up on mod hub but now all of a sudden it's no longer on mod hub i had downloaded it and used it before so i don't know where you necessarily could find it probably one of the third party um uh, mod sites you can probably uh come up with it I hope this is a good spot it looks as good as any to me okay and that's 79 grand I told you that money was burning a hole in our pocket so this hole will take your pocket or a hole in our pocket my, I, I'm terribly sorry <laughs> no I'm saying it's burning a hole in your pocket it ain't burning a hole in mine <laughs> it's not nope why not just ain't oh so it's gonna be uh you're, you're just gonna be a, a be a, um i know what i want to say and I'm, it's not coming out so we'll move right along <laughs> it's disagreeable day that's bailing stress so why aren't they going in trying to put it in the right spot well there's only one spot to put it in I want to see if it's a maybe a production of some kind and it's definitely not a production uh, did you get the one that takes straw bales I'm pretty sure I bought the one that takes straw bales or is it the fact that it spawns right there where that trailer sign was what trailer sign The one right where you were standing before you opened your menu. Other side. On the side. Yeah, right here. That's that's where uh, the bales would come out when you extract them. Yeah, this is bale storage, straw, and hay. Alright, 
on. We're not going to fiddle with this for too long. We'll sort it out later. I'm Got saying, one. right. I know the one you're talking about. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> oh, man. Blue Fox, how's it going, man? It's been a while, man. Haven't seen you around too much lately. Hope everything's going well for you. You know what? Baylor can stay over here, too. Yeah, we've got a we've got a new shed now, so um, it might not fit in that shed, will it? I'm just gonna park it up right there for right the second and go move the grain. The silo. <laughs> I do, Robert. I do, Robert. I do. It's good to see you too, man. Man, we got a lot of straw off this old field. We got a decent amount of straw, didn't we? Well, these are, what, 9,000 liter bales, and I bet there's at least 40 of them, 40 or 50 of them. At least. Oh, apparently my brain's not functioning today. I couldn't find the spot. Uh, if you wanna wanna hook up to the cedar and bring it back over that would be good oh you didn't take the fent back though did you no i didn't i yeah. guess i got my truck up here though all right uh the cedar might need to be filled up with seed that it does i'm not sure i did it after that last contract i washed it at least Oh, fair enough, Robert. <laughs> as long as it's only my brain, that's right. Uh, Sparky the Lavender does not regrow. It'll, it'll have to be replanted. It's not one of those crops. At least not on um. this map. Does this cedar have to be unfolded to work with the seed fill point up here? Uh, no. You do have to be on the proper side, though. You would want the driver's side, the left side of your tractor, closest to the seed fill point, the seed bags. The hit boxes on the uh, the Kinsey planters 
are very, very, very particular. It's, it's not liking it. You have the caps open? That's my problem. <laughs> oh, good. It's not just me today. <laughs> now I don't feel so bad. <laughs> okay. I wasn't terribly feeling bad, but still, you know what I mean. If you want to uh, throw oilseed radish in this field, then I will move the rest of the straw bales down to our new bale storage. If we have Sharko pull all of the implements, will it improve our environmental score? Uh, probably not, because you end up with a lot of oil and diesel in, in uh, the lakes and stuff. So I'm, I'm not no, sure. No, I, th I think he meant pull by hand. Oh, 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 pull by hand. No, because, you know, something that we don't usually mention on stream is that Sharko farts a lot, and that adds methane to the atmosphere, so... <laughs> Oh, poor Sherco. He's not even here and he can't catch a break. <laughs> Man, that's, that's filling up nicely. I'm digging this bale barn. It's the little things. Rule number 73. Enjoy the little things. Um, actually, Caveman could probably extrapolate that on that a little bit more. Prices have started to come back down, and the chip market has started to equalize a little bit. But Caveman, you see that comment from Robert? Yes, I heard about that. Um, I'm actually thinking it's going to go down a little bit more than what it has before it stabilizes, and I'm kind of hoping it does. And the biggest reason I'm kind of hoping it does is because all of these people that are, like, out there that mine it, when it crashes hard, a lot of times they sell off their miners and everything dirt cheap. Which will help the chip shortage some because instead of everybody having to go buy new miners that are trying to get into it, they can buy second-hand ones. And also a lot of people that are doing the Ethereum are selling off their GPUs for GPU mining because, well, it's not profitable anymore. Now that's interesting. Um, so what? What did? Uh, how much did Bitcoin fall? Uh, not far enough to really make it worth selling if you bought Bitcoin, because like panic selling. Yeah. But it is down enough to make it not profitable for mining anymore. I want to say somewhere in the neighborhood of like 20%. So basically went from, because it was right at 60,000 a coin, right? Uh, no. It was right at 40. Oh, that's, that was its peak, 40? No, I, oh, the most recent peak, yes. Okay. That I remember anyway. So it dropped ten thousand dollars down to thirty. It dropped pretty hard. All 
I don't know. I haven't really been keeping up that much with Bitcoin. But have you been? It doing, is. Have I do know it's dropped more at all. Um, actually, I haven't been mining since I got the system I'm using now. Oh, okay. Because, quite frankly, I don't want to take a chance at damaging a card for gaming right a gaming card right now. <laughs> yeah. Especially when it's a LHR card to start with. And what's an LHR card? Low hash rate. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, it'd be nice to see those 3080 prices come down. I know I've been, for several months, been looking at uh, replacing this machine. I'm really pushing it to its limits with everything that I do on it. Especially during a stream with multiple pieces of software running all at the same time. Oh, it dropped 40% at one point and then started edging back up, huh? Okay. That's that's kind of a natural market fluctuation when something is falling. Everybody's looking for the rock bottom price and then they start buying back again. Yeah. Um, I was on, I'm honestly kind of hoping it drops down, like, like almost completely crashes. I know a lot of people are hate me saying that. I was about to say, you're wishing bad things on a bunch of people. But, realistically, if it does almost crash and then recover, what the reason I'm hoping it'll do that is because you've got a lot of people that... or You've got a few people that own the majority of that coin, and if it starts crashing out hard, they're going to sell it. And what it'll do is it'll end up causing a bull market again for that currency. Yeah, that makes sense. And the bull, the bull market is where people make money. If it's going to crash, it needs to almost disappear. I don't think you know, you're like, going to see anything crash that hard, though, are you? I mean, well, unless they crypto's, just... crypto's done it before. That bad, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, Bitcoin hasn't, but others have. Well, anybody who can even conceive of a... of an electronic coin system is kind of making one. There's so many different ones out there now. I mean, I, I think if we put our heads together, we could actually make Harv coin. Do you have about $200? <laughs> I could probably, uh, I could probably scrounge that up. For about $200, you can make your own crypto. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's not going to be running on your own separate blockchain and all that, but you can make your own crypto for about 200 bucks. And it'd be on the sole blockchain. Okay, we've got two little bales left over there. I'm not going to deal with uh, bringing them back over. And I'm going to leave this trailer down here for now, since the baler's going to be here anyway. swapping me the fence for the truck uh, you need the truck I was gonna go uh, show off your new mod and get that little chore taken care of uh, the other trucks over there if you want the other one if oh you that's want right. one, fine too no it's fine I forgot about the other truck um
how did that happen? <laughs> well, at least I was able to write myself. Good God. All I did was turn. So don't turn sharp with the Baylors. They don't like it, okay? No, they don't. Wow. That was funky in the extreme right there. <laughs> Considering there's a set number of Bitcoin allowed makes it not realistic to follow a normal market. Yeah, that, that is true. It does have a cap on how many are in circulation. Um, but they never go out of circulation, right? I mean, they're electronic coins, so once they're created, they're there forever, unless somebody deletes a hard drive or something, which has happened, but would massively suck. <laughs> well, they're stored in the blockchain. So... Did they just incrementally increase the amount of, uh, oh, that's not what I wanted to do anyway. That's right. Like, just so slowly over time they'll increase the number that can be out at any given time, or, and they just do it slow enough to make sure that there aren't, you know, there's never enough out there to meet demand? Basically. Um. <laughs> Robert, that's right. <laughs> Like, and the miners really aren't actually, like, Bitcoin miners aren't actually mining Bitcoin, so far, per se. They are the computers that are, they're a bunch of computers that are networked together to run the blockchain. So every time a transaction is made on the Bitcoin blockchain, those miners process it. And the miner gets paid a small portion of a Bitcoin for helping process that transaction. I think we can store in these. Um. Yep, that's going in. Time for a trip to the shop. So we realized something during uh, the, you know, the first couple of, of uh, field preps on this map that we had planned on producing enough stone from our fields to generate all the lime we need. Well, such is not the case. And there was some discussion had about where to buy stones. Well, until today, that I'm aware of, yeah, there might have been other places, but not like this. Um, gotta get to the shop, not to that. But Caveman, going on ideas from you folks, came up with the stones palette. Caveman Customs Workshops presents the Stones R Us mod. 2,000 liters of stone for 75 bucks. And we can buy up to 16. I'm not buying 16, I'm buying 10. That's going to be 80,000 liters of lime when it's done processing. Go ahead and buy all 16. <laughs> See how heavy it is. <laughs> Too late, I already bought the 10. You were you were thirty seconds too too short on that one. <laughs> Sorry. But they should load up on our they're not loading on the auto load trailer though, caveman. Uh they load as a Euro pallet, not a big bag. Remember you gotta change what you're loading? Yeah, I just don't remember how... Oh, there it is. Uh, Z. 
Okay. I didn't realize someone had changed it. There it is. Last thing we were using were the big bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Detail, shmeetails. Well, 10 pallets don't feel all that heavy, I gotta tell you. This truck is pulling them with no problem. It's not the truck that's the issue, it's the trailer. You'll see that the trailer will start sinking into the ground if you get too many on there. But like, <laughs> if you get if you get out of your truck and turn on super strength, look at the truck and see how heavy it says it is. No, oh, I'll do that before I unload. Graham Pierce, thank you so much, man. Member of the Red, the Grateful Red, outstanding dude, and he upgraded to a homesteader. Very much appreciated, Graham. Graham is a very active member on the Discord. And one of the sole, but probably the sole player who's still using the member's Discord, or the member's uh, dedicated server. Yeah. And we need you guys to pick a new map. Uh, where do we, where are we getting the weight on this? It's not showing me weight. Uh, yeah, I think you have to have your F1 open to see the weight. It should be down near the bottom. I think I've got too many things that activate, so it's not showing me anything. Do you have uh, super strength turned on? Nope. You gotta have super strength turned on for it to work. Little Harv and shower beer time. There you go. Well, it's got super state disabled or super strength. And I know that I'm logged in as admin, so I don't know what's going on. Uh, you just didn't hit the, the double tap the alt. It's the super strength from the chainsaw mod that we use, or the lumberjack mod. Yeah, and I've got and it active. It shows up. It shows up for me when I look at the truck, like I'm gonna pick the truck up. It doesn't work on the trailer for some reason. At least for me. Well, it's not working for me either. Oh wait, there it is. 31,293 kilograms. Now, if only we knew what that was in... in, uh... <laughs> and I bet this is gonna... No, it went the right direction. But I think these all have to be tipped in. Actually. You they can don't. drive it right over the spot where you tip in stone. You don't even need to take them off the trailer. Yeah, the stone picker was um, in the way. I had to move it. Well, for that much weight, I just scrapped, scraped off about 17 layers of uh, tire. There they go. Oh, that's cool. They actually uh, sink. They even got a nice rock sound to them. Very nice cave, man. I like it. 60,000 pounds. 10, yeah, 60, 65,000 pounds, basically. You can imagine how heavy a full trailer is. Um, even 20 pallets, that's over 100,000 pounds if you're talking 20 pallets. That's a lot mm -hmm. of pounds. Mm-hmm. Oh shoot, you know what we didn't do? 
Oh, we can mulch the oilseed radish, though. Yes, we can. I was about to say we didn't mulch that field, but we can mulch the oilseed radish so we don't have to worry about it. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. I love it when a plan comes together. Yeah. Caveman does it right, man. Yeah, I, what? What? It took you 15 minutes to make that? Like, he was, he was so literally going, I'm going to try to get this done before we finish doing this. I can't remember exactly what it was we were doing, and in no time he, he had a working stone pallet mod. It was a cultivating contract on Field 78. And if you guys are interested, I bet Caveman would be willing to, uh, if it's not already, it's, uh, put it on his itch.io or on his... Uh, One of his it'll be on sites, mod network. It'll be on, it'll be on itch.io before long. And the, the I've just got to get a couple of screenshots and a description, and uh, rebranding it from Blizzard to Stones R Us. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Tanel, so the purple is lavender and it's exclusive to this map. The link to this map, um, which is PC only, is in the description of the video down below. If you see this kind of silvery white field coming up on the left, that's the early stages of lavender. Or is that a lime field? Nope, that's just lime. <laughs> Man, am I fuzzy today. Woo. My brain's sitting here going, stop, stop trying to use me. I don't like it when you use you, when you use me. <laughs> Your brain's mad at you today, Harv. I'm no kidding, good lord. It's like anyway. I'm overworked, I'm underpaid, That's I need right. a vacation. That's right. That's the truth. When Caveman comes up with Caveman Coin, he's in. Robert Feltz is going for Caveman Coin. Anyway, this is Lavender. The, uh, the second stage of growth on Lavender is a very silvery white looking field. But now when it's in full bloom, almost ready to harvest, not quite, but almost, it is pretty spectacular. <laughs> Jordan, yes, that's exactly what you smelled burning. My brain melting down. Must have been a pretty big meltdown if you smelled it all the way in Canada. No kidding, especially over all the pig poop. Come on. For those of you who uh, haven't been around, Jordan plays in pig poop for a living. Although I don't think he really wants me to phrase it that way, but I mean, isn't that what we're realistically talking about to some degree? <laughs> Jordan works for a hog farmer and cleans his pens. So he likes to come in and talk about how he's having a crappy day. Yep, smoke's, you know, smoke is literally coming out of my ears. If I didn't have headphones on, you could see it. I'm sure of that. <laughs> okay, planted. Excellent. I'm headed to field 50 to start this big, big plowing contract, so if you want to swap out the cedar for a plow and join me, we'll see what we can't do about taking care of this forthwith. This was too big a contract to pass up, even though it's going to be a ton of work. It's like $75,000. Like, nope, we can't let that one go. It's not putting us over our monthly allowance, is it? 
it is but remember we said in the 12 month period it was the average of the months oh I didn't know we decided to go that way yeah, that's what everybody said we could do I'm going with what the, what the crowd said okay so I'm pretty sure uh, Smitty was the one who finally finally made the call and, and nobody disagreed with it so And I think last month we only made like 130,000 on contracts, so I still think we're pretty safe. I think this is field 50 right here. We've done that field before. Probably. We cultivated it before. I'm on the wrong bloody field. I thought this was 50. All the way north. No. Oh, I stopped short. Oh, this is 42. <laughs> There's that smoke. Pouring right out. The mini map threw me off. I'm blaming the mini map. It's too small. It's too mini. That's alright. It just gives me the opportunity to drive through somebody's field. Well, with as many contracts as we've done since we started this map, I think uh, in the next stream or two we'll be able to say we've done that field before on just about everything. Hey, look at that. It makes such a big difference when you're on the right field. You know I don't really want to sure set does. the cardinal, but I will. I don't think they are, uh, I don't think they are, Jordan. I don't remember seeing maple leaf, maybe up along the border, the Canadian border. I don't remember seeing maple leaf brands here in the States, though. Anybody else? I've seen maple leaf maple cookies at the dollar store. Okay. But that was a couple of years ago, and they kind of vanished. Well, the old jokes, Jordan, are sometimes the best jokes. Cutting in some headlands. Man, this is a big honking field right here. What did I say that was? 89 acres? Something like that. Oh, and I found out something too. If you hadn't noticed already, Key, man, these electrical poles, these towers, you know, that cut through the field sometimes? Yes. They have no collisions on them. Yes, I found that out myself. Find I think I'm. Go ahead. 
I think I mentioned that over on field 46. Uh, when all three of us were working on plowing field 46. Sharka was working on plowing a field? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh yeah, we need to look into that 26 meter plow. Who makes that mod again? We're going to have to look check, check, check that out. I forgot oh, about it. 26 meter plow, I'm down. Yeah, I remember talking about it before and I even said, I'm like, man, if we can find a 26 meter plow, uh, that might just finally replace the 6M, 9M, which has been a go-to since FS19. Yep, sure has. Where are you even at on this field? Straight ahead of you. And I just realized I was heading your way, so I'm going to go down over to the other side. Oh. <laughs> I, I was just doing cutting in a headland to give us a little more room to work down at the end. Yeah, I remember that now, Sparky, that it was on Mod Hub and all that jazz. There we go, now we can get this show on the road. Ooh, better. Uh, the horsepower on these, uh, the 6M9M, or are you, you're talking about the, uh, the 26 meter plow, 340 horsepower does seem pretty low for a 26 meter plow. In fact, in the real world, I think a big bud would have a hard time pulling <laughs> that big of a plow. Yeah, I think um, on the 9M it's like 240, and that's 9 meters, so 9 times 3 would be 27, that'd be 720 horsepower. Now we're cooking with the uh, grass, gas, brass. Now we're cooking with that back grease. <laughs> there you go. Spoken like a two vir true Virginian. How close are you to the mountains in Virginia? Uh couple hours closer to Carolina than I am the mountains fair enough that whole area on the east coast is just beautiful though The base game plows a realistic size. Yep. Yeah, well, I mean, the problem with, I mean, not the problem, I mean, just what happens in the game is we really lose 
track of the scale of this equipment that we're working with here. You know, we're sitting here talking about nine meters being too small. And these tractors look, I mean, big, but they still feel rather tiny. But in the real world, I mean, you know, this, this tractor is probably 10, 12 feet tall. You could lay down three times on top of this plow. You know, we're not talking about tiny stuff here. We just get an impression of a smaller size because that's, you know, playing in third person especially. You're seeing it more from a distance, so it looks small. There's a lot of different reasons, but whatever reason it is. <laughs> I've been drinking coffee all morning, Robert. I might need an espresso, though. <laughs> You're right. Uh, might, it could be very interesting. It could be very interesting. That's the truth. We could give Caveman a, a blank, flat, four times map with nothing on it. And I think he'd be pl happy to plow the whole thing. I would. They have what they call mountains here in North Carolina. I haven't seen mountains since I was uh, last out on the West Coast. Atomic Sneeze. How's it going, bud? Good to see you again. Um, that's that's kind of funny, actually, because um, when I was long-haul truck driving, we would... Uh, I was working for a company out of Missoula, Montana and running the West Coast a lot, the Rocky Mountains and such. And then we'd head back east from some of our trips, of course, and you start going through Tennessee, West Virginia, Virginia, that area, and, and there's these hills in the road. And on the CB, you know, the, the truckers that are local are like, you better slow down, you're going to burn out your brakes on that mountain, and da 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 and I'm like, tell me when I see a mountain. Like, this is, this is nothing but a, a pimple. <laughs> I've come down I-70 off of Eisenhower Pass on the, at, at 11,000 feet. And held back 80,000 pounds for 60 miles. Ain't never, never seen anything on the East Coast that, uh, after that, felt more, much more like a pimple on the road. Uh, one company that I work for, Eisenhower Pass, they considered it such a dangerous uh, interstate I-70 west of uh, Denver that they wouldn't even let us drive it. If we were dead center headed for Denver, we had to split right or left and go up north around it or down south around it and then come back up into Utah or Nevada or California. It was off limits to drive. And then back when I was driving the most dangerous mountain pass to drive um, was a mountain pass called Cabbage in west or eastern Oregon on I-90, which is just a series of switchbacks. And it's an interstate, you know, I-90, but it's just a series of switchbacks. Um, I don't know how it got the name Cabbage. I don't know how anybody comes up with these names. Donner Pass is another big one on I-80, just east of uh, Sacramento, between Reno and Sacramento on the California-Nevada border. That one's not so much dangerous, it's just very hilly. You've got the Three Sisters in uh, Wyoming. Those are uh, nothing major. Pretty straight shots over those, but it's you know three different mountains that you have to just cross over one after another after another. Um, oh, the grapevine coming out of Southern California on Interstate 5.
Don't know how that one got called the grapevine either, but. What dev? West has mountains, the east has speed bumps. <laughs> That's kind of how I always felt about it. I, I just didn't see anything that was uh, that that much of a challenge. Okay, man, you done got all quiet, man. Huh? <laughs> I said you done got all quiet. I'm sorry. Well, you should be. Oh. I want to get this plowing done so we can get over and harvest our lavender. Oh, is that what it is, easy? Um, easy, where is Dinner Mountain? I'm curious about that. Dinner Mountain, I haven't heard about that one. Uh, Smitty, yes. Definitely know how Donner Pass got its name. Anybody who doesn't, back when the Wild West was being settled, people were traveling to California for the gold rush, that kind of thing. There were a group of travelers called the Donner Party. And they were headed over the mountains along the, uh, the Sierra Nevada mountains, as they would be known now, um, headed into California, and they got caught up in a snowstorm. Couldn't travel any farther. Um, they were blocked in, and the Donner Party... Um, well, they all started starving and freezing to death. They couldn't get anywhere. And then, um, well, in order to survive, they had no choice but to result to cannibalism, and they've been rather infamous ever since. What's your about Talk about roasting your brakes when I was a kid. Me and mom and aunt and brother and sister uh, went camping in the mountains in Alberta and my aunt was smoking the brakes down. <laughs> okay, you guys must have been pulling a heavy trailer or something. Did you overload your camping trailer, Jordan? I only ever got my brakes hot one time and that was actually coming down a fairly small hill in Southern California. Headed out of Barstow toward LA. Yeah, Donner Pass is 40 miles. It's long. It's it's kind of cool. They've got some pretty interesting road signs on it, just expe especially for truckers. You know, there'd be big ones like, let it roll, truckers, 40 miles straight ahead, or, you know, just, just little things that aren't what you would normally expect to see on a road sign. It's kind of cool, actually. I think the biggest mountain I've ever been on with truck would probably have been Afton, what they call Afton Mountain on 64. Is that like, is that a 6% grade? It's something like that, yeah. I don't remember exactly what it is. Uh, yeah, Robert. Windshield time has never bothered me. Although I don't have the stamina for it like I used to back when I was driving a truck. But, uh, yeah. Had no problem doing that. Oh, okay, too cool. We'll let that thunderstorm pass. We don't want anything to happen to our too cool. about every mountain I've been on with a truck or they call a mountain or something like that yeah I've always been on weighing 120 gross good god um both Afton Mountain going up to Blue Ridge Park oh yeah I've been up to Blue Ridge Parkway at a truck grossing 120 
Good that Lord. That was fun. The people you've worked for love to overload your trucks, man. Uh, that one had permits to be that heavy because that was a melon machine. Oh, okay. I know you were telling me about the <laughs> the brick load earlier today. It was just like, man, I'm afraid my tires would pop. <laughs> yeah, 40 pallets of brick. <laughs> Double what they were supposed to put on the trailer legally. <laughs> Good lord. For bailing, is it better to just make the biggest bales or will they not be able to be picked up by the loaders? Um, if you're talking about auto load trailers, Koala, um, they'll pick up any size bale you have. They'll usually only Except just pick up. Except for conventional. Oh, the little tiny ones? They do not do conventionals. Okay. For the big balers, the auto load trailers will pick up any size big bale you make. Um, but it'll only pick up one size at a time. So if you start with a 240 centimeter bale, then that's all that will pick up. But it, it, it chooses automatically based on whatever first bale you pick up. So for the sake of space storage and not having to spend as much time picking up bales, I always go with the largest size I can get my bloody hands on. You know, you can actually pick up the baby bales with a uh, stacker that comes with the base game and it stacks them in the shape of a large bale then the auto load trailers we use will pick them up as a large bale that's right we've never we never actually used that even on our smaller fields on uh, Elm Creek we never got around to trying the small bale stacker we were just all about efficiency. You know, we're going to have to do a true, like, start small and grow playthrough. Nothing over 50 horsepower? I'm not saying that. I'm saying, like, <laughs> true start small. Yeah. I, I would definitely agree to nothing over 50 horsepower if we had implements to go with that, but we don't have all the implements to go with that yeah, yet. Yeah, that's a fair point. Okay, nothing over 100 then. I was just going to say nothing that's outside of, like, you know, 80s or 90s technology. But we have, we have started small. We forget that because we always end up growing big, and by the time we're done, we're huge. But, um... PV Uncharted, remember all the old school equipment we were running on that? Small, the small yeah, international I'm saying, and everything? I'm saying we need to do that again in 22. Oh, absolutely. We will. We've got we've got a good two or three months of uh, this map before we can get to 12 million, and that's assuming we can pr progress really quickly. Which we've been doing a pretty decent job of so far. Oh, yeah. We've got a few more equipment upgrades. By the time we get to a level where we're producing 12 million a day, we're going to need probably two more harvesters and three more tractors. 12 million a day, you mean 12 million a year? Yeah, whatever. I do that it's all the time. a big difference between a day and a year. <laughs> Everybody knows what I made. They, they're so used to me saying 12 million, 12 million an hour. Saying it off, they just auto correct. <laughs> yeah, Harv always does that. He <laughs> gets his labels wrong. It is what it is. That's what we're here for, Koala. To have fun and share information. Give Sharko a hard time. And give Sharko an incredibly hard time. Even when he's not here. 
Although it does help when he's here to wreck a tractor or sink one in a lake. It does make it easier. More comical. That's because he's always so incredulous. Like, I, I don't even know. How did that happen? I, I wasn't even... Like, no, you're just Sharko being Sharko. What do you expect? It's too bad we can't feed rye and triticale to chickens. I'd go ahead and get us some chickens started. So that was something we did talk about. Yeah, we're going to have to figure out how to do that. Hmm. Well, you know, the base game chicken pens, everything that you uh, tip into them automatically becomes chicken feed, I think, because you can tip anything in uh, that it allows, which is sorghum, wheat, or barley. Right. <laughs> I wonder if you just turned it to a bulk fill type and you could dump any crop in and it would become chicken feed. Well, if I convert it into a bulk fill type, we could technically feed them rocks. I know. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, yeah. My longest trip when I was driving was 5,298 miles. Picked up a load of paper rolls for newspapers in Idaho. Had 12 rolls and 12 different stops all up and down the East Coast. I had a run like that, Atomic, that I uh, picked up in Montana. It was uh, about 4,500 miles. And it dropped south, I want to say, into Denver and then headed east with three or four stops along the way and then all the way out to Long Island on New York and then down into Virginia. I think that one took seven days, but it wasn't anywhere close to... Well, I mean, it was still about 4,500. It's been a long time. Only one I ever had that was like that. Tribbles. <laughs> Well, we don't want to get our we don't want to get our triticale wet either. Yes, I know chickens do eat small rocks and gravel. Not gravel and uh, sand. Yeah, you know why? It's to help with their food digestion. Yeah, they store them in their gullet. And yeah, it, that. It grinds up the the stuff that they eat so that they can digest it. Even if you have small birds, you know, like cockatoos or parakeets or something that you have for pets, uh, you need to keep... And then they actually make it um, keep a thing in there with gravel so that they can keep their gullets full of stone. Apparently my... I didn't they uh, made it for small birds either. I didn't know they made it for small birds. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, parakeets need it too. For sure parakeets. I'm not going to say I'm a bird expert or anything, but my sister had a parakeet. It was a great parakeet named Charlie. That bird was a clown. The one that always messes with me is the parakeet, the small one or the big one? Parakeet's the small one, the budgie. They're sometimes called budgerigars or budgies. Parakeets. Okay. okay. So the parrot is the big one. Parrot's the big one. Or a cockatoo. There's a cockatiel and a cockatoo. The cockatoo or cockatiel is a smaller bird, uh, not as small as a parakeet. And then the cockatoo is the big one that's the... Cockatoos are probably bigger than parrots. And then what are the what are the big colorful birds that you always see on all of the Caribbean type stuff? A lot of times they're blue or bright yellow with uh, 
other bright colored feathers. Somebody's going to fill me in on this because I can't remember the name right now. They're beautiful birds, though. Which is why they use them on all the advertising. And I don't know. I do. I just have a fuzzy brain today. Jordan's going to be smelling smoke again anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, we got a good stream going today, guys. Thank you so much for joining in. You guys have any suggestions for uh, livening up the chat just a little bit? Macaws, that's right, macaws. Anything? What, what can we add to... Uh, to engage you guys a little bit more because honestly your chat is what helps keep the stream moving forward it's kind of a, a but obviously we need to help spawn or spurn some conversation so I'm just curious if there's anything that you guys would like to see hear about uh, more information on Should I come up with like a series of 10 questions, the 10 questions of the day? Something like that. You guys, you guys want like games in chat? I don't want any that like time people out and do goofy stuff like that, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, balk at adding a little something to play while you guys are watching streams. We are open to suggestions. Exactly, Eric. So do um, so do parrots. Those birds live a long, long time. Farm girl, how you doing? Good to have you with us. Nice to see you on a Sunday. I hope your father had a lovely Father's Day. And happy Father's Day again to all you fathers out there. Keep in mind that a week from today, yesterday was the official two-year anniversary of Harv's World. Next Sunday, a week from today, we will be doing a two-year anniversary special. With some giveaways, Easy Rider has graciously donated a copy of FS22. I'll add some merch to that. We'll do some giveaways and uh, just see where everything takes us. We are done, Caveman. And that's $75,000 in our pocket that we will laugh with all the way to the bank. Got that right. Do I have... I, I I agree with Kevin. I need a bigger plow. <laughs> well, we are going to try to remember to find that 26 meter plow. We we gave I gave him free reign to go buy any cultivator he wanted, and he went out and bought a big one. But oh, here we go. I get to, I get to battle traffic again. These duels on this map are not the best thing. They do help well, in the, the field. You're the one that just had to have duels. Was I complaining? No, I don't think so. I'm just saying. They they do help. I just have to remember that they're too wide for the traffic on this map. Fun boy, how's it going, man? Yeah, we were talking about that earlier, Rooster. Those big plows. We're going to have to look at those mods. Especially on this map. Cause, and uh, the big challenge we've uh, got ahead of us. Does that road go all the way through that you're on? No, it does not. Oh. I'm, I'm cutting gonna... through the timber. I thought that's what you were doing. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to try to take this tr this tractor through that. No way. I think we get back to the yard. Ha! Almost dodged him. We get back to the yard. We'll advance the month into August. And we'll get on some lavender. Oh yeah, Bex always makes everything huge. I definitely grabbed her mods um, just before she shut everything down. I'll have to go back and look. 
But if there's one on mod, I would rather use ones that are on mod hub when we can, just because uh, it gives everybody the opportunity to be able to grab them. I actually think I've gone and gotten myself turned around here. I'm going to have to check like, the map. You must have turned got turned around because I'm already back at the farm. Well, I couldn't cut through the forest. I see the shop. I know where I'm at. 80,000? That's that's not... That's, that's like two contracts. Three contracts for us. So that's not too bad. Plus, for 26 meters? 80,000 sounds like a bargain to me. There's the shop. Besides, when I uh, when I have to run over cars, you know, they're the ones who lose in that battle, not me. They're just another speed bump in the road. Grabbing the cedar, headed over to our other field again. If you want to meet me over there with the truck and trailer, that would be cool. I do too, Kevin. It's actually really well made. Uh, There's a, there are a few which things. Which truck and trailer? Uh, the crop, the crop trailer. The tipper. get over there we'll advance to August and then we'll get that lavender off the field Yeah, that's the one I think everybody's been talking about, Graham. A large chicken enclosure on Mod Hub with 5,000 chicken capacity? 5,000? Whoa. If that's on Mod Hub, we might have to check that out. And we definitely need to check that out if that's on Mod Hub. No oh, kid. I mean, I found one off Mod Hub. It was just a mod of the base game, Chicken Coop, that held 2,000, and I thought that was massive. 5,000? That'd be halfway, <laughs> well, not halfway, but that'd be a, a long way toward our, our bloody uh, 12, million, 12 million a year goal. Is this still not ready to harvest? Or did it just not catch up yet? It's ready to harvest. I think I literally just watched it change. You did. The field hadn't updated yet. Remember, this is a much narrower header, so... How quick is it filling up, though? Not terribly, not terribly quick. quick. No, it's definitely not a high-volume crop. Uh, Robert, this is the NF March four times map. The link to it is in the video description right down below the stream. There should be a link there. I'm pretty sure I remembered to copy that over. 
Now this field is big enough that this six meter header is going to feel pretty tiny. I'm going to try it's to... It's all snow. I don't think I can get under that. That's okay. Yeah, no, I can't get under that. I don't think it's filling up quick enough that... Uh, you might check the contracts, tell us what's available, and see if there's anything worth taking right now. Got a bunch of bailing, bunch of bailing. Uh, there's a hundred and forty-three thousand dollar cultivating contract on field seventy-eight. That's half our monthly. <laughs> We're on that. We're all over that. We need to borrow equipment for it, though. Is there a smaller one we can borrow equipment on? Uh, yes, it looks like there is. There sure is. So that'll give us two, two good-sized cultivators. Yeah, it's a $23,000 contract, the Field 16, that we can borrow equipment on. So I'll borrow equipment on that one. And then we'll accept the one on 78. We love the old 78. Uh, so just, Heck, if you want, go ahead and send somebody up there and put a helper on that, get them started. Okay, I'll. And fortunately, I'm going to have to drive it all the way up there. Okay. Um, I'm not filling up very quick, so you've got time. I haven't been to your farm in three months, Eric. I'd be going through serious farm withdrawal. What have you been doing then? You've been uh, just uh, ATSing? American Truck Simulator. Yeah, we've got a nice little crew popping in today. Try to get this lavender in. This is kind of a neat, a neat additional crop. It's quite different. Not something you definitely see much of or you don't see on any other map. It's not exactly like real world lavender, but it is it is a gorgeous crop. Especially in the early morning sunlight coming across like that, that's really cool. Oh yeah. It is pretty. Kaminsky. I can't see what's on it, but I uh, I like it. It looks like the sun. <laughs> At least from what I can see. That's a nice bright orange, man. That's better. This is a bigger field than I remembered. Although to be fair, we haven't spent much time on it yet, except to just get it planted that first time. The problem we got right now is that we've got crops that we want to plant, but they're all spring planted. Although we should get cereal cereals in somewhere that we could feed to chickens if we get chickens started. Yeah, we probably should. Barley. I vote for barley because it's got an earlier harvest than wheat. Alright. We'll put barley in somewhere then. Uh, it's been a few years too, Eric, <laughs> since they started releasing new states. Sharko is a big fan of uh, American Truck Simulator. I don't know how much he plays it anymore. I know Firefighting Farmer was getting into it quite a bit also. Nice, Kaminsky. I think you nailed it then. Beach vibes? I like that. Very cool, brother. Yeah, the first headland pass came in. I only filled up to about 80%, so. Not much at all. 
9,000 liters, give or take. If that's the case, I can run around and do stuff like this. At least yeah. get it set up while you're... Yeah, shoot, get both those cultivators working on that. That's the plan. Outstanding, absolutely outstanding. Uh, Farm Girl, this map is 175.361% course play capable. Course play does a great job on this map. Just don't run your equipment too fast. We make that mistake occasionally, but there are there are some obstacles that you don't always see up front, like little barriers on roadways and such. But you know, if they get hung up on it the first time, you'll you'll uh, know it's there and won't have to worry about it the next time. Come on, get your save done. We've got our map saving pretty frequently, so I, every once in a while we get a little hiccup. And, and that could be course play related. Caveman probably just laid in a course. So I got a little just bit started. of a... Yeah, I got a little bit of a stream the hiccup there. Literally just click the button when you said something. Yep, I figured. I thought, well, it's either a save or, oh yeah, Caveman's playing with course play right now. Okay, so first place point left. I don't remember what they were turned down for, but worker workers' wages are set back to 100% again. Okay. Uh, they were turned down for... I don't know what they were turned down for either. Okay. Yeah, we were testing something or something, I think. <laughs> There's course play kicking in all over the place. I'm sitting there, stop. 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 <laughs> Course generation takes a lot of uh, processing power, as I'm sure you can imagine, especially on big maps like this. Just for a few seconds. And it depends on the complexity of the field. But once it gets laid in, and course play now, I mean, 19 was good. FS22 version of course play is spectacular. The interface is so much easier. Uh, it's very intuitive. It, it works right in line with the base game uh, helper menus. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Very nice, Kaminsky. 149 views. Very nice, brother. Nice. You must have hit a nerve. Keep hitting that nerve then, man. Found something that people really wanted to see. Just don't play with it too hard. Some people might not like it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've only got one good nerve left, and you're on it. That sounds like something my mom would say. I've got one good nerve left and you're on it. Now why don't you go out and play in the traffic? And my mom was the sweetest lady I ever knew. <laughs> well, well, around here I never heard playing traffic. I always heard them playing the field. <laughs> well, was there, a, was there a harvest going on at the time? <laughs> Something was going on, whether it was harvesting, cutting, plowing, something. Go play in the field. <laughs> but I mean, around here, you know, traffic around here is, you know, like three cars. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> it's heavy traffic if you got three cars and a big truck. <laughs> and, and they mean heavy traffic literally because of the truck. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, what game? What game, Kaminsky? I've heard of, uh, of uh, people calling out hackers, cheaters on video. 
I'm wondering which game you caught them on. I can't imagine anything like that in Farm Sim. I think the need to hack has been pretty well uh, overshadowed by all the mods that are available. Why would you hack a game when you can just mod it? That would be kind of stupid. <laughs> All right, Kevin. Kevin knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Come on, course play, do your thing. What the heck kind of course did you lay in there, man? It took it a long time to process that. Stop, stop. That, that's part of the problem. I forgot to set it to first waypoint. Ah, uh, I do that all the bloody time. It was trying to figure out where the nearest waypoint was. But what I'm doing is I'm running a single course with dual implements running offset side by side. Oh, okay. I see what you're, you're trying to do two vehicles, basically. Yes. So one would skip a row to leave room for the second one. Yeah, I haven't tried to, to set up uh, multiples yet. Yep, and I got them set far enough apart where they should be okay. So that should be okay. Okay, hackers in Rocket League. Yeah, you run into the, the hackers, the cheaters in uh, Forza 5, too. I guess they're not talented enough to win any other way, so they've got to... Uh, to cheat their way to the top. I'll tell you the worst game I ever played for hackers or dealing with hackers was uh, CSGO. The worst game I ever played for dealing with hackers was um, Grand Theft Auto Online. Well, and Red Dead it, Online. I can't say I ever played those enough to deal with hackers. But with CSGO, it was like every match you hopped in, there was at least three people with aimbot and probably ten people that had the ability to fly or something. Yeah, it's so frustrating to have to deal with that. Like, you're trying to play a game and just have fun, and and then people come in and have to, have to spoil it for everybody by cheating their way through it kind of thing. I don't know. I find it a little frustrating sometimes. Call of Duty Warzone. That's a bad one, too. Um, speaking of Forza, since you say you play sometimes, Nate, um, a guy who's been following Harv's World for a long time, his name is Lifehawk. He, uh... Lifehawk? Lifehawk? Yeah. Lifthawk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy. <laughs> um, he is heading up a Forza 5 play group on the Harv's World Discord, so anybody who wants to to build cars and race with the crew. Uh, you can get a hold of him. We've got channels in the Discord now for Forza 5 for people to chat and whatnot. I'll probably be doing a little racing every now and again. Um, 
and it's you know it's nothing to stream it's it's nothing necessarily to do with Harv's World because Harv's World is really about farm sim but it is tied in um, he and I talked about it a little bit I actually asked him if he would do it and he was more than happy to he'd make an excellent cruise director and uh, we actually have a club name the club name is Farm F-A-R-M stands for Farmers and Racers Mafia and you know just maybe get everybody together once a week hook up for a couple hours and, and run some races or do some playgrounds or because Forza is not as much a racing game as it's kind of a racing arcade with a lot of different stuff you can do and I know Lifehawk really wants you to play Caveman I gotta get it I gotta get it downloaded first <laughs> Uh, he, he feels like a lot of the questions that he has and that I've had about uh, tuning cars to make them more roadworthy, he feels like you could answer those questions better than anybody we know. Like toe in, toe out, adjusting your anti-roll bar, setting up your transmission gearing, adjusting aero, springs, dampeners. There's a lot going on in the tuning side of Forza. Yes, there is a lot that goes on in the tuning side of it. You can adjust your tire pressures for different situations. Well, it's going to be different for different builds, I can tell you that much. Oh, for sure. Different road surfaces, too. Yes. You have, uh, I think it's four basic track types. Um, you've got street races, you've got road racing, uh, cross country racing, and then dirt racing. Oh, and drag racing. And then if you want to pursue it, you can also run drift vehicles. They've got some drift courses. Uh, I mean, Kind of anything you want to play at in a car, they found a way. And there's, there's over 600 different vehicles in Forza now. Do they have Rallycross? Uh, racing? Yeah, Rallycross. Let's define Rallycross, and I'll tell you if they've got something that looks like it. You know what motocross is? Yeah. Rally Cross is kind of like that, but with cars. Um, they've got something similar. Uh, the cross country races are often very bumpy and jumpy through water. Okay, so that's more like a it sounds more like rally. Yeah, it, it probably is. Um, but no, they don't specifically have anything called Rally Cross. Okay. It is, Midge. Shiny lavender. It's the way the sun is coming across it right now. It's getting a little bit of a glare. It is lovely, however. And I can tell you right now, I mean, just this field is telling me we're going to need to... Uh, probably look at a bigger harvester in the not too distant future. We'll keep this one as a secondary for sure. But I think our next next major purchase should probably be an, another harvester. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. The Kubota pack is coming out pretty soon for uh, FS22. I know Caveman's real excited about that one. You want to tell everybody what you're looking forward to on that, Caveman? They're adding the ability to have passengers with the Kubota pack. But you're going to have to have the Kubota pack in order for it to work. That's what I'm looking forward to.
Well, I remember one of the favorite things you'd like to do in FS19 was take a lot of the vehicle mods and add the passengers to them. Yes, I love doing that. Yeah, this will be our small Sharko harvester. All right, I'll start running ups and downs now. Now that I cleared off that little side section over there. He used to come up with all kinds of creative ways to add passengers. He had us hanging on the sides of trucks and all sorts of fun stuff. It was cool. Sitting on a toolbox. Yeah, sitting on the toolbox, hanging off the rear bumper. Laying down in the bed. <laughs> yep. Yeah, this will be... Maybe we should just make a rule that if it doesn't have Kloss on it, Sharko can't drive it. Because we have the Kloss tractor in this harvester. And I know our next harvester won't be Kloss. It won't? Oh, yeah, I guess it probably will. <laughs> I just remembered, yeah, it probably will. I mean, I can fix that real quick. Oh, make one of your own? Yeah. If you want to, be my guest. If you're ready to put together a... Uh, I've got a, a bunch of... Pa I've got a bunch of stuff I need to put together that I'm working on. I was going to say... I just need uh, to actually get together and finish it. I'm looking forward to the Borgos at some point. And I think we're going to need those. Uh, well, we haven't even upgraded yet to the bigger Kinsey, so... Not in too big a hurry. We'll probably keep our small Kinsey and get a, a, another big Kinsey, and then probably when the time is right, upgrade to the Borgo Seeders to get the extra width. Well, he did have people riding in the back of pickups, Midge. He could he could pretty much put a passenger anywhere he wanted to. Got a funny idea now. Uh oh. What's your funny idea? We're going to make Sharko ride on the hood. <laughs> the hood of the truck with his feet dangling over the, the grill. Well, you've seen how people strap a deer across the hood of a truck, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> strap. We, we done got us a Sharko strapped across the hood. Deer, elk, Sharko. Field is like a purple explosion. Okay. Uh, caveman, if you've got something you want to talk about or pay attention to chat for a minute. I need to step away for a second, guys, but I did throw a helper on this, uh, this harvester. I will be back in just a couple of minutes. Uh, yes, Shokus are in season right now.
Uh, Kamensky Dog, there is a general chat on Discord. It's called Pub Chat. Uh, no, I did not get that question you asked earlier about the wood chipper. And yes, that's right. Sharkers are always in season. Well, if you don't see pub chat it's going to be under the tab harv's pub and you also actually have to agree to the rules before you can actually see everything other than just the rules Kinda does look like Laffy Taffy. No, I don't know if they fixed the wood chipper yet. That would be way too much work and not exactly family friendly, but it's hilarious. I am back. Sorry about that. Uh, have we covered everything up to now? And I want to know what's so hilarious. Read the last comment. Or did you miss it? 
make a bumper toilet and have Sharko sit on it with his pants and I go <laughs> TP flying in the wind, that's brilliant. Outstanding, absolutely outstanding. Stop paying a helper now that I'm here to do the job. We're at 48,779 liters in the trailer. So we're probably looking at about 75,000 liters of lavender on this field. Something like that. That's my guess anyway. 75,000. Uh, somebody asked what's everybody's favorite beer. We had uh, Dos Equis from David Smith. From Smitty. I'm a Coors Coors guy myself. Anybody who watched the impromptus would know. Give me a banquet. I'm a man of very simple pleasures. There you go. We, we could do like the whole Mad Max farming. Sharko tied to the front bumper like, the, like Mad Max was in uh, Thunder Road or uh, Fury Road. <laughs> it would be funny. We could have guys, we could have Sharko swinging on big arms down to the field to harvest crops. <laughs> So, two helpers on field 78. They're rocking along pretty good. Excellent. How far how far along are they? They're almost done with the second headland pass. Holy shnikes, Batman. I'm going to have to take a look at that here in a second. Pop my map open and see what's going on up there. I done got off track a little bit. Are there any productions that use lavender? When I get turned around on my next pass, we'll go look at the productions too. Yeah, I don't want any Coors Light, Eric. I want I want full body, full flavored Coors. The light does not taste anywhere close to the same as a, a traditional Coors, and uh, it does not do it for me. I'm not exactly a beer snob, but I know what I like, and it's not Coors Light. Okay. First thing I want to do is look at Field 78 and see how these guys are getting on up there. Oh, yeah. They're kicking that out nicely. Look at those boys go. Outstanding. And then I'm off my track again, but I don't care because I want to look at these productions. I'm going to be halfway to... I can't remember anything that took Lavender specifically. Not seeing anything yet. Nope. And most most of the rest of it's just power production, electricity. Somehow it sort of got straightened out. I'll have to come back and do a cleanup row. That's all right. Um. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything that takes lavender either. You know what that means? Mod opportunity. Graham, take, Graham goes for Foresters. I don't think I've heard of Foresters. Um, I do know that uh, somebody can fill me in on what this is. Um, 
Jeremy Clarkson, is it? It's Hawkstone, Hawkstone Lager. They just started brewing in the not too distant past uh, from his farm, Clarkson's Farm, providing uh, some of the inputs for that that brew. But I see his advertisements uh, more and more frequently now for Hawkstone Lager. Root beer is the best beer. Miller or Bud? I used to drink a lot of Miller Genuine Draft. Now it's too sweet. But I did enjoy Genuine Draft back in the day. That's a good idea, farm girl. To make lavender oils. See, that would, that, that would open the doors to a lot of different crops. Mint. If somebody did a mint crop and you had an oil factory that produced lavender oils or lavender and mint, mint oils. yeah that would be awesome that would be really nice I know it's a different process than extracting like sunflower and canola oils because seed oils are I want to say they're pressed where extracts like lavender or mint would be almost boiled or cooked in some way to extract the oils. I remember um, there were mint fields near Boise when I lived up in Idaho and in the fall they would actually pull the mint right off the field and put it into a, a processor right there, like a, a hall behind processor. You could smell mint for miles as they cook the oil off of it. Ginger beer is good stuff, especially um, when you use it in a Moscow Mule. Moscow Mules are nice and uh, refreshing. A light, summery kind of uh, drink. I like a good Moscow Mule. I haven't had one in a long time. I had a friend who was kind of majoring in making Moscow Mules. <laughs> that was one of his favorite things to do. I'm about ready for an unload, caveman. Oh, Foster's. You like Foster's lager. Yeah, straight. Sorry. Straight from Australia. In the big blue can. Exactly, Atomic Essential Oils. That would be pretty slick. Oh, they, Eric always has that extra little bit of information I can rely on. They're distilled, and technically the oils and flavors are esters. I like, I like little uh, bits of uh, information like that. Thanks, Eric. 20% 20, 20 complete up there, and they've done two headland passes. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. But you got to think, they're running side by side. Oh, yeah, what's that? Probably 36 meters of cultivation at a time. Fourteen point three times two. Yeah, twenty, almost twenty-nine. Almost twenty-nine meters wide. Uh, Cave man, you want to fill Kaminsky in on what the Discord requires, because he's apparently struggling with uh, the channel. Seeing the channel, there are numerous channels. And as long as you have clicked the I, I accept these rules button, you should be able to access almost all of them except for a small bank of YouTube members only channels. That's correct. Um, if you're seeing a bunch of channels, you can see 
the pub chat and pub talk and all that stuff. I had forgotten about Moose Drool. <laughs> I never tried one. I've seen it on the shelf plenty of times. Apparently Farm Girl's a moose, moose Drool drinker. And man, it taken out of context, that could sound really, really bad. <laughs> I gotta say, I've never heard of that one. Have you heard of Dead Guy Pale Ale? Yes, I've heard of that one. That's from a. I've actually been to that brewery. It's in Newport, Oregon, right on the coast. They do an amazing double chocolate malt or double chocolate stout. Double chocolate oatmeal stout. It is absolutely delicious. Um, if I'm going for a more expensive beer, I'll usually throw back to you know like a microbrew. I like Alaskan Amber. Is uh. Probably my top pick for micro brews. A lot of people like Fat Tire. That one got really, really popular. I'm not even sure you could consider Fat Tire a micro brew anymore. It's so popular. I remember people flying back east from Idaho, seeing them on the plane um, with cases of Fat Tire because they couldn't get it out east. Um, Did you accept the rules, Kaminsky Dog? Did you read and accept them? I don't think he has. I don't think so either. You have to read the rules and accept them. It tells you which button to hit to accept them. Once you do that, it unlocks all of the channels for you. That it does. Okay, farm girl from uh, Big Sky Brewing in Montana. I didn't. I actually thought it was a Canadian brew. Actually. Oh no, I'm thinking of Moosehead. Moosehead is the Canadian brew. You clicked the button on there, Kaminsky dog, but you hadn't clicked the right one. I like the uh, the spray that comes off the back of the harvester. The dust is that he actually colored the the dust purple. When you harvest this, it's it's kind of cool. And it's actually got a different thing that it's like spraying out otherwise as well too. Like the leftovers are different. That's a great idea, Atomic. Add hemp as a crop type, which is becoming more and more popular now, although it is highly regulated. I know you can buy or you can uh, get registered as a hemp producer in Nevada. I know that for a fact. You can in Virginia, too. Yeah, they're starting to relax the rules on that. I mean... Hemp would would still to this day be a very popular crop if, if marijuana hadn't been outlawed. And I'm not pro or con, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying hemp got lumped in with, uh, with marijuana when it doesn't have enough THC in it to be considered a drug. And so hemp production pretty well got killed off by that.
Uh, Roosterneck says when he joined, he had to use different emojis to agree. It wouldn't let him click on some of them. Uh, there should, there's a bunch of extra emojis here that are not supposed to be there. Um, the blue check mark on the first post is supposed to be the only one there. And then the other stuff's only supposed to be, like, the first three on the other one are the only ones that are supposed to be there. Have people been and, adding emojis and somehow Discord is picking those up as clickable items? I think so. So you probably need to turn off emojis in the rules. They're supposed to be turned off. Oh crap! Well, we'll get we'll get it cleaned up. We should be able to delete those. Uh, no, Jordan. What's Dusty Lands? What's that mod that's coming out? We're gonna have have dust blowing all across the landscape. Oh, and we're at 79,000 liters already. Oh, wow. Even better. Oh, we must be hitting a bigger patch of uh, higher quality soil. I don't know. Our yield is still pretty decent. We knew that that big bright yellow was going to be kind of bad. So that's, that's silty loam, right? I think so. Or loamy sand or something. It's not one of the good ones. It's one of the okay ones. Silty clay and then, is the bad one. Yeah, silty clay is the bad one that's up there in that little corner. And I think it actually starts right here where I'm parked at. You can see from the bright yellow on the yield on the mini map. Maybe you can't because uh, uh, I can't. you're not in the harvester. Yeah, like right now I'm harvesting silty clay soil. Now I'm back into sandy loam. Sandy and loam. And you're going and into loam. loam. Exactly. I forgot how much of that was silty clay up there in that chunk. Well, isn't there always dust that comes off your combine? When you're harvesting, I thought that was already part of the game. I can I can see purple dust blowing right in my face. Well, right in the camera's face. Now this is a big, big section of loam right here. Yeah, thanks so much, everybody. If that's true well I'm, I think people might confuse him for the smokable version in the same plant family um, farm girl I'm not entirely sure that's why it's so heavily regulated but CBD is becoming a very big deal and I've, I've heard a lot of people get um, some good positive help from it and then of course hemp is a very fibrous you know you can make clothes out of it you can make paper out of it um, it's got just many 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 uses and was it you caveman that was telling me about the other the other aspect that killed off the hemp industry were you the one that was talking about that a while back uh, it was something to do with lumber. That's all I remember. Now, I'm sure lumber mills would have liked to see hemp go away because a lot of that wood pulp gets turned into papers and stuff too, and hemp could kill that off pretty pretty easily. Yep. Kill that off. Uh, not to mention, you can use hemp fibers to make press board a lot stronger and all that fun stuff there you go
actually caveman if uh, and it's up to you of course but if I'll clear I'll clean that one little strip off over there that I missed and then if you wanted to grab the cedar and start throwing oil seed in this that'd be all right by me what do you here there we don't have that much left to go here I'm pretty sure I can I can track down the the chaser bin at the end of my passes. Like so. And I'll repeat again, happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. And uh, keep in mind, next Sunday will be the Harv's World two-year anniversary stream. Celebrating two years. The official anniversary was yesterday, June 18th. I can't believe it's been two years. Where does the time go? <laughs> Way too fast. We'll be doing some giveaways, and, uh, we'll, I mean, it's mostly doing our regular thing, just, uh, enjoying the, uh, a bit of achievement of sticking with it for so long. Two years doesn't seem like such a long time, but sometimes it feels like a long time. A lot has happened in those two years. Oh, that's that's good to hear, Atomic. Yeah, I've I've heard a lot of people with chronic pain find uh, CBD to be very very helpful. I've never tried it myself, although I probably have enough chronic pain at this point in my life that it wouldn't be the worst idea I ever had. Nothing as bad as breaking in my back, though. Um, Graham, we'll have to see, but I think I'll probably join you guys for a while. I think that's on my play card for uh, for uh, at least part of it, if not all of it. We'll see. I just ask that you keep in mind that uh, you know it's it's just friends hanging out, so we're you know it's. Forza 5 is something I do to separate myself from Farm Sim. You know, to kind of give my brain a break from focusing on stream-related, content-related stuff. Uh, so, it's and it's Lifehawk's deal, so he's going to be running the show. I'm just going to be there to play, man. Oh, you're very welcome, Farm Goal. I'm glad you're, uh, you, uh, were able to get involved and that my videos helped you out with that I very much appreciate it the tutorial the walkthrough has kind of been my claim to fame it's what's brought most people to my channel you're in very good company a lot of these folks did the same as you and learned to play from the Ravenport walkthrough and if you ever have questions don't hesitate to ask we'll be happy to you know if we can't answer them uh, we got many, I mean, a lot of these guys, they can probably answer your questions better than I can sometimes. Now they've, they've been doing it for so long, but they all got the start, just like you did. Thank you for, uh, thank you for speaking up and saying that, though. It's always appreciated and good to know that I've been able to help somebody enjoy something as much as I do. Well, thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. 
Eric has been one of the most adamant Harv's World watchers. Uh, he has literally watched every minute of every video I've ever posted. <laughs> and I appreciate it, bud. He has been an ardent supporter for a long, long time. Now, the real question is, is who's watched more of your video footage, him or you? Well, nobody's watched more than me. Because not all of the footage makes it to the stream or to the channel. I was actually just talking to uh, somebody about that the other day, and I'm like, you know, not counting streams, I've probably got close to 400 videos posted, I think, but it's hard to separate the two. Uh, maybe counting the streams. And you figure your average, average video is anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. And figure that's three to four hours of recording to make a 30 to 45 minute video, and sometimes more. So, if there's, let's say, 500 hours of video posted, I've probably recorded 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours of footage that hits the hits the editing room floor. That's a lot of footage. Not oh, good, Kaminsky. I'm glad you finally got it sorted out, bud. Good, I'm glad. Those acceptance buttons, I know they've always been a little bit tricky just because they don't tick off like you almost can't tell that you've clicked it because there's no number next to it um, but we we haven't found a workaround for that so but at least it's working for you now so that's all that matters I might have to look into that some more and see if I can find a workaround for it Man, this field is way bigger than I thought. I keep wondering if we should plant some canola. But the problem with doing that is then you're kind of tied into canola. Or you've got to let your field sit fallow for a year. Right. And I don't think we have the room to let our field sit around. But if we're going to sometime in the... Well, no... Is it next month we can plant barley? Uh, don't know what month it is we can plant barley. It's either this month or next. This month is definitely canola, so I think September is yeah, when we plant month barley. Is barley. So we're going to plant some barley for chicken feed. Somebody said there's a 5,000 chicken chicken coop on Mod Hub, so we're going to be looking into that. We're definitely looking into that big plow. At one point, oh, FS yeah, yeah, at one point in FS19, Caveman made us a big plow out of uh, that massive cultivator. Well, that wasn't a plow; that was a subsoiler. Subsoiler plow. They all it still gives a plowed state, right? Except you couldn't create fields with it. Yes, you couldn't create fields with it, and that was the flex coil. I converted that into a subsoiler. Thing. Right. <laughs> And what you had, was that a 100 meter uh, lime and fertilizer spreader? Yeah, it was fertilizer spreader. Remember that? It was just vast. <laughs> like crazy wide. You couldn't zoom out far enough to see where you were spreading your lime. Looking at the rules and you see a black and a green checkbox. I think one uh, of those I'm looking at them and I see a blue and a green. Maybe it looks black on a device. Maybe. We'll get that sorted. We'll try to get that sorted out at some point. Okay. 
okay. Could it be the mode that they're looking at it? I always look at everything in light mode. There, a lot of people like to go dark, and I've always just used light mode, so. Oh, I'm using... I see blue and green on in dark mode on PC and on Android. And he said he was on an iPhone, so... I mean, I don't have an iPhone to check it. <laughs> well, I do, so I will... <laughs> Check it here in just a second when I get turned around. Um, Atomic, play the first one. Play Red Dead because the characters in Red Dead 2, you meet some of them in Red Dead 1. Although, the, the character that you meet from Red Dead 1, Red Dead 2 is actually a prequel. To Red Dead One, so take your pick. It works either way. I enjoyed them both, uh, but yeah, Red Dead Two is a prequel, not a sequel. So, right, play it however you want. Might be fun to play them backwards, though. Red Dead Two is a little more polished than Red Dead One, so it might feel a bit like taking a gaming step backwards. But they're still both fantastic games. Yeah, the tractor is there, but it needs to be removed. It's not supposed to be. The only one that's supposed to be there is the blue one, or the one that you see is black. I see a whole bunch of icons down there. Oh, that's the Xbox. Yeah, mine's black also. Yeah, apparently on the iPhone okay, it converts well. it to black. Huh. Well, thank you, Glenda. Um, I'm only father to a Fent 1050. But I'll take it. <laughs> uh, Kaminsky, if you're interested in Forza 5, look at the Forza 5 channel. Lifehawk posted a meeting time for people to get together and play. So, uh, if you want to get together with some of the Harvest World folks and play some Forza 5, you are more than welcome to join up. Lifehawk is the man in charge for, of all that. Like I said, when I have the time to play, I will, uh, I'll just be a player, man. It's not going to be part of the channel. It's just something extra for to bring friends together and let them have some fun playing together. It can be hard in games like that to get groups or have extra people to play with. So you know, we just thought, you know, if enough people enjoy it, give them a chance to hook up on the Harv's World. Almost done. I missed one little itty bitty spot back there, and that's going to be the last of the lavender harvest. Ice. Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, ATS processes that. Although, Eric, um, it's not as bad in FS22 as it is in 19. 19 kind of renders the whole map all at the same time and you have to keep it in memory on this it uh, it loads the map incrementally so you're not having to load the whole map all at once I don't I don't know that much about Forza David other than um, you have to have an Xbox account 
you don't have to have an Xbox, but you do have to have an Xbox account. And since that's a Microsoft product, um, probably porting over to Mac. I don't know, do, does Microsoft port over to Mac some of their other game titles? I don't know that much about Macs either. I don't know if their game titles do, but I know some of their software does. Or at least it used to. Well, hello, Farmer Joe. Welcome to Harv's World. Good to see you today. Um, what Mac are you running? Are you running one of the ones with the M1 chip in it, or are you running one of the ones with an Intel chip? Because if you're running one with an Intel chip, just run it inside of a VM. Agreed, Koala. I think it looks like it's a it's a great looking crop. Um, no, I'm going the wrong way. We're over here. Eh. We'll just park over in this yard for now. Fuzzy Farming Sim. Welcome to Harv's World. Good to have you with us, bud. Thank you for dropping in. Checking in on our... Uh, our cultivators. There we go. That's what I wanted. So we ended up with 103,000 liters of lavender not too shabby and I don't think that's going to be ready to sell until February now remember we can't hold on to product beyond its peak sale time that's one of the rules for this right. playthrough hey Mr. Swede how you been man good to see you again got all kinds of old friends dropping in today What were you going to say, K-Man? Sorry. I'll say, but that doesn't apply to feed. Right. Correct. Feed stuff, straw, things like that. We Obviously, we have to hold on to that longer. It's just uh, money making. Anything specifically tied to making cash, we have to sell annually. Right. Um... If that iMac is more than a few years old, it's going to be running an Intel chip. Well, his iMac and... is brand spanking new. He just got it. Oh, it's brand new? Yes, yeah, Smitty's, Smitty's the guy that, in chat who's been uh, giving us uh, updates on when his new computer is oh, coming. Oh, that's Smitty. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't realize David's, that was Smitty. Yeah, David Smith is Smitty. Okay. Okay. Um, well... If it is an M1 chip, unfortunately, running a Windows VM is not really a thing right now. But you could run a Linux VM and play it on Linux. I hope you had a good day at work, Mr. Sweden. Glad to see you uh, joining us for a while. Okay, what am I going to do? Let's look at the contracts and see what else is available. Oh, man, these guys are really cranking on this. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Oh, caveman found his case, Steiger. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> That's what was available for one of the contracts. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, and that's what I wanted to look at was contracts. 143,000. Wow. Boy, if we wanted to if we wanted to do Harv's help and hands and do grass contracts, my god, there's a lot of good cultivating contracts right now. Field night. Did we ever decide what hearse is? H I R S E don't remember 
Oh, Field 53 has a $44,000 plowing contract. Well, we don't have anything to run the plow right now, though. Yeah, you do. What? Shark Shark's tractor will run a plow. Barely. It will barely. Hey, it run still that runs plow. it. I know, but it still runs it. Yeah, well, you do fifty-two acres with Shark's tractor. <laughs> I'm not doing fifty-two acres with Shark's tractor. We've got wheat in field seventy-one. Forty-three acres of wheat for twenty-six thousand. That's not worth it. That is truly not worth it. I want to see our environmental scores. So on the field we just harvested, our environmental score right now is at uh, 83. That's not bad. We're losing out on weed control somehow. Our environmental score increases our sell prices by 10%. I like that. Field 21. Okay, so this is across the board for all of our fields then. That's cool. Oh, hearse is millet. Thank you, Fuzzy. Hearse is millet. We haven't done millet. I know we're going to try to do some hops. Thirty-six thousand fifty-nine acres on field nineteen. Where's field nineteen? It's got to be somewhere around the middle. Well, yeah, it's got to be because this is twenty twenty-one and twenty-two. So nineteen. Oh, it's right. <laughs> it's right here. Duh. All right, we'll do that. Harvesting field 19. The only drawback is I don't have the right header. That means a run back to the farm to get the appropriate header. Come back down here. Uh, Mr. Fothergill, good to see you again, man. We are on, it's in the video title. NF March, four times. A link to the map is in the video description down below. It can be found on Mod Network. I'm pretty sure that's what we link to. It's an interesting map. It's very well done. Um, it's a little bit flat. You don't have too many uh, landscaping obstacles to contend with. Some might argue that's a good thing. I don't know. I kind of like um, a little bit more terrain, but... In this case, when our fields are so big, um, we probably, and the challenge is so steep, we probably don't need um, <laughs> any more hurdles. You got that right. Well, I've been able to build up my little farm on uh, no man's land to make about 1.5 million a year. And I know what I've got in place to do that which means I've got to do 10 times that much. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a huge challenge. We're going to have, we're probably going to max out our helpers at some point. This is going to be such a huge challenge. No exaggeration. I fully expect us to utilize more helper, or as many helpers as the game will allow. And I know for a fact that the limit on helpers in 19 was 10. Never tested it in 22. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, we're rocking today, Kev. Yeah. Yeah, we got a nice uh, little stream today, everybody. I appreciate you sticking with us for so long. 
you guys are really what makes the streams fun anyway. I mean, we'd be playing regardless, but uh, you guys are the ones that really make the difference. That's a really good suggestion, Eric, and yeah, it would be nice if it was uh, 10 helpers per player. Oh, I can't go that way. There's a irrigation ditch in the way. I know on 19 in multiplayer, it was per farm. Was it? Yes. that mean we'll have to make some faux farms to generate extra helpers if we need them? If it works the same way it did in 19, it won't work. Oh. Keep your panties on, car boy. I'm getting out of the way. All right, millet coming off of field 21. I hope this is good soil. See millet. Yeah, you and me both. This crop millet. This would be the perfect, the perfect chicken feed. Birds love to eat millet. <clears throat> Anytime you buy bird food at the store, it's always loaded with millet. <clears throat> Smaller birds, anyway. It would be nice if they moved it to per player instead of per farm. Right. Makeup of this field is. I'm curious now. Where was I seeing that before? Maybe it's only on. No, it was. Was it in the farmlands tab? Yeah, that's it. 32% silty clay, 27% sandy loam, and 36% loam. Not a great field. Briggs for parakeets. I just remember the Benny Hill show where they always said you have a lovely pair of keats. I'm thinking I should have set this up in course play and then run the chaser bin because this is filling up very, very quickly. 
Well, you can still stop, set it up on course play, and run the chaser bin if you want. Yeah. That looks like what I'm going to have to do. going to try. To get at least one of the headland passes so then I can set up course play and it doesn't overlap too much. I can start it in just the right place. Man, is there any piece of equipment we haven't run today? Yeah, mulcher uh, fertilizer spreader. And the weeder. And the weeder. Absolutely, David. Course play doesn't care what it is. If it's got a tool and there's a field, it'll run it. Um, even if there's nothing to do, course play doesn't care. It's just following the course that you set and running the tool that you've attached. The game might say something like you can't plant that in this field or whatever, like if you're on a contract and you've chosen the wrong crop, but course play doesn't care. Well, that it does not. It will just keep pl trying to plant that crop. Yep. And I don't know about now, but I know two game updates ago, it would tell you it's the wrong crop, but it'd let you plant it anyway. <laughs> Just trying to do it yourself. Surely we've all made that mistake at least once. I know I have. I know I've made that mistake at least once. Plant the wrong crop on a seeding contract? That's frustrating. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. A meadow's not technically a field. Like, you know the maps that have meadows? Yes. Hmm. There we go, now we're back at it. Get this first headland done. Set this harvester up on course play for two headland passes. Skip the first pass and put them right into the second one. That'll work. That's a good point too, fun boy. You can generate your own course if uh, course play doesn't, doesn't see it as a field you can basically map the outer edge of where you want course play to work and once you've got that outer border set then you can tell course play to work within the, the boundary and it will set courses up that way and you can also do that to have course play plow fields that don't exist yet that's true done that before a time or two.
that is an excellent suggestion also. Well, thank you, Kevin. Kevin is the man. He's been around for a long time, too. An ardent supporter of the channel, and I can't thank him enough for everything that he's done. Just being a friend to me and the channel, and uh, being willing to step up and take on the moderator role. Much appreciated, my friend. Happy to do it. You guys have brought me hours of enjoyment. It's a real give and take. Man, I'm going to be hauling millet for days. I just got done planting that night. Oh, you're done? I think so. Oh, good. Then you can run the chaser bin. <laughs> I don't mind paying those guys to, to cultivate field 70, 78. If you want to run the harvester, I'll run the chaser bin. Either way, I don't care. I want the chaser bin. Give me a minute to get there. Brian did refill the cedar. Yeah, those, th those hit boxes are very picky. Millet crop looks surprisingly like sorghum. Actually, it's not surprising. It it basically is just recolored sorghum. <laughs> uh, forget it. It's being too much of a pain. Yeah, we'll get it later. We were talking about that, Eric. Um, it's it's a possibility. He might be able to tweak a. A chicken coop enough to make these crops chicken food. I think millet would be a very, very good choice for that. Especially if there's, if we can find that 5,000 chicken chicken coop and it's on Mod Hub, that's fair game. Man, these guys are going to town over here. Oh, there you are. I, I'm like looking around trying to figure out where you're at and I, I couldn't see you. I was trying to figure out where you were. Right here. The whole time. <laughs> Not that that helps. FS-22 Big Chicken Barn. Alright. That sounds good to me. FS-22 Big Chicken Barn. Really? Oh man, we are turning this into a super long stream. Three and a half hours in, man. Where's the time go? Are we really? We are. It's almost 2.30. Oh, wow. I uh, know we're going to try to 
a little more often standardized maybe closer to a three hour stream on Sundays. I didn't realize we'd gone to three and a half already. I didn't realize that either. Oh, the widget might have uh, might have shut itself off. It takes a special little program called a widget to make your chats pop up on the uh, stream, and apparently that has decided it uh, got tired. Absolutely, Graham, without a doubt. Cracked corn for chicken feed? That's a good idea, too. I like that idea. If cracked corn can be added as a feed type, then millet can be added as a feed type. Yeah, we enjoy it, too. We enjoy it, too, Koala. You said this was your first stream, right? You're getting an extra, extra long one. Yep, extra, extra long. Yeah, super extra long. Yeah, we normally do two hours. Yeah, two hours has been our standard for quite some time. We have talked, especially because this is such a big challenge, um, and had pretty much planned to try to run three hours on Sundays now when we can get away with it. But we, uh, we blew that out of the water. Atomic, you said the magic word. Juanitas are the best tortilla chips ever made. I love Juanitas tortilla chips. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Zappy, I I'm gonna let I'm gonna let the audience answer that question. I'll be on, I, I'm gonna let let the the viewers tell you their opinions. I know my opinion. Most people know my opinion. If they didn't, um, I wouldn't be streaming on this game. So for hundreds of videos and thousands. I've got over 4,000 hours played between FS19 and FS22. 4,000 hours. It's hard to believe. In two years, we know it's worth out. Well, Zappy, thank you so much for being the newest Hard World subscriber. Very much appreciate that, man. Good to have you with us. Great to have you. Graham is one of the newer players learning to play recently. I'm glad you've been enjoying it, Graham. Very much so, brother. 
There we go. We, we're getting a resound. Well, so far, uh, lots of yeses. Smitty's been playing since FS13. Very cool. Well, my question for you, Zappy, is did you like 19? Yeah, how much did you enjoy playing FS19? FS22, you know, it's not that much different. The best of what we got from 22 is a lot of quality of life improvements that are minor, but when you add them all up, are pretty darn significant. Especially the sale screen. Well, yeah, for me, that sale screen enough is worth the whatever the game costs. Without a doubt. Uh, the only drawback that 22 has for right now, but it's it's rapidly, uh, maybe not rapidly because they are very difficult, but um, they are slowly but surely improving as 19 has a better selection of mod maps. Um, but you can still, you know, find hundreds of hours of good play on the base game maps and uh, the maps that have been made available so far. Your results may vary. Oh, without a doubt, Farm Girl, without a doubt. Just the quality of life improvements, I think, really have made a huge difference. I like uh, having a few a few new crops available to us now. I like the fact that uh, you know, we've got a few new field functions that are required, like rolling your field. Not even required, but they are optional, but um, it will improve your yield for rolling and mulching and things like that. Rock picking is interesting. Um, you can It can get a little bit tedious, the rock picking, but caveman has put together the plow and rock picker combination, so that works pretty well these days. Uh, Midge, actually, Caveman and I were talking about that the other day, because we used that twin screw in FS19 on our PV Uncharted map, and I love that twin screw harvester. It was fun and unique. <clears throat> and I want to say it had some really big tank options without needing to be tweaked. No, they weren't huge. But no, they but it was a nice... Either. Yeah. I want to say it was like 28 or 30,000 liters. I remember we had to adjust the unload speed because it unloaded painfully slow. That's true. Yeah, it wouldn't unload fast enough to run a, a chaser bin beside it. This is a big honking field.
Well, I would argue, Eric, that a lot of the, the DLCs that came out in 19 aren't necessarily necessary because the modders have covered most of those bases for free. There are some nice ones, though. I like the Anderson group, and I did like the Borgo quite a bit. The Borgo was a DLC, right? I'm pretty sure I remember that. Yes, it was. guys three and a half hours that's the longest we've stream we've done in quite some time but I think we're gonna keep working on this field get this harvest done and uh, we're gonna call it a day for now but man it's been a great stream I can't appreciate you guys hanging with us or can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys hanging with us for so long it's good to know you uh, enjoy harvest world just that much Makes it all worthwhile. Yes, it does. Uh, Zappy, it can definitely be profitable if you only work on animals. I mean, as long as you're um, planting and harvesting your own feed stuffs. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, caveman, any final parting thoughts and words, my friend? See you Wednesday. We will see you Wednesday. We'll be back. Don't forget, next Sunday is the two-year anniversary stream. We'll be giving away a few things and uh, just doing our normal thing, but uh, appreciating the time we've had together for the last two years. As always, guys, we appreciate you coming along for the ride. And until next time, take care.